Hello everybody. Another video here for you today. Rest in peace Chuck Apps. Miss you buddy. This is a recap of the November 30th Season 9 Episode 5 of The Curse of Oak Island. If you missed my recap of Episode 4, there's a link to it on the upper right. Let's get into it. The Borehole Core Sample Drilling Operation in the C1 Cluster at the Money Pit continues as there is a big meeting in the war room and via video conferencing with representatives from three of the companies they have worked with in the past to discuss a much more extensive plan for excavating the money pit. The plan is to dig four 10-foot wide steel encased shafts to a depth of as much as 170 feet. Marty explains each of them will be bigger than Borehole 10X, which took Dan Blankenship, Dan Hensky, and Dave Blankenship 10 years to do, and they are going to do multiple in just this year. They will be using a bigger hammer grab as well. Rick estimates they will have completed the C1 cluster drilling operation in four to six weeks, which will give them precise targets for those shafts. Rick, Jack, and metal detect ex detection expert Gary Drayton continue going through the Dunfield spoils on lot 18, just west of the money pit which have been largely ignored since that 100-foot wide dig took place more than 50 years ago. They find a large timber that has two iron fasteners in it. They will have it tested to determine a date. The narrator speculates that Dunfield might have found the money pit, but was unable to dig deep enough to reach it. Blacksmith Carmen Legg visits the research center to examine the suspected chisel that Gary found in the spoils on last week's episode. He determines it is not a chisel, but a mid-1700s cribbing spike used for attaching timbers together. Anything dated before the 1795 discovery of the money pit is compelling because it could be something involved in the construction of the money pit. The next morning, Rick joins the team at the C1 cluster where they are drilling borehole E1.5, which is 11 feet southwest of the C1 shaft and where they think Robert Dunfield searched for the treasure vault. Uh, from the E1.5 shaft at a depth of 89 foot, the 89 uh, foot core, Sample revealed this possible wood beam that has pit saw marks on it. One person would be above, one person would be below, and they would move the saw up and down, uh, sawing the wood, shaping it. Uh, Rick says it indicates a tunnel. Next, Jack Bagley, apparently giving Gary Drayton a break. He gets a big metal detection hit in the Dunfield spoils and asks Billy to dig it up with the excavator. They find a big timber that is notched out and contains a dowel hole, which is right there. Wooden dowels were used widely in Europe in the 1500s instead of metal, which would corrode in water. Uh, the big timber wasn't the metal detection hit, so they keep looking. They find the source, and it's a big spike. Cut to Rick saying that the spike and timber together are indicative of a tunnel, hopefully. In the war room, Rick and Marty meet with an Oak Island theorist that wrote Marty a letter telling him he thinks they are misinterpreting some of the Xena Halpern map. Originally labeled in French and dated 1347, this is an English translation. The team searched in the area the hat should be, but nothing definitive was found. The theorist says he went back to the original French map and noticed that the leader lines for the labels have a squiggle then point to a place on the island. He thinks that the hole under and the hatch aren't two labels, but just one, the hole under the hatch. See how they highlighted this to show that this in the original doesn't go directly to where it says La Trap. See, it doesn't go like that, so it shows it going directly there, and it doesn't go that far on the f original version of it. So it was it was not a goodly a goodly it was not a good drawn uh, version 
a, a faithful version of uh, the map. He overlaid a the map over a satellite image to see where it pointed, and Jack said it looks like it's on lot four. They soon after have specialists use radio waves and a magnetometer to survey, starting with lot 22, followed by lot 4. And this is how the, this is how the island is broken apart, and they were sold uh, lot by lot like this. And now the Laginas own most of it, uh, except for still the parts owned by... Uh, Fred Nolan's son, which is which is in a lot of eleven, maybe some of twelve, and I think there might be one or two other lots that they don't they do not own. Uh, Jack finds a possible stone road under the Dunfield spoils. This 1931 aerial photograph that was presented to the team a month earlier shows what the researcher thought could be an ancient road. Jack calls surveyor Steve Guptill to document and assess the find. Based on preliminary data, he says the road from the swamp lines up with the new find. The still from an animation shows how the eye bolts... And chest and barrel wood pieces they have found along the stone road in the swamp could have been used to transport heavy treasure from a boat at the swamp wharf to the Money Pit area. Rick Marty and some other team members go to the new find to take a look. Rick asks Billy to dig a trench so Dr. Spooner can take a look. He says it's similar to the photograph as far as the stone layout. The magnetometer results are in. The radio wave test will take longer to analyze. Uh, the blue and pink areas are anomalies. And this image highlights an anomaly near the road in lot 4, which Jack says is where the hatch could be. He said that before, and he says that again here. This is the Halpern map on top of the magnetometer scan. Surveyor Steve Guptill tells the group he plotted the hatch location the best he could from Zena's map, and the position is right there. Right there. Give or take. Ten feet. Next time on the Curse of Oak Island, Gary Drayton finds something with gold content. I couldn't tell where on the island it was. Uh, there's a large piece of timber that lines up with one of the roads somewhere. Couldn't tell where that was either. And the drilling project brings up a core sample that has unspecified evidence that could apply to a chamber. Uh, I'll be... Could be. Could it be applying to a chamber? Had to do that. Uh, I'll be back next week to recap that episode 6. And a link to that recap episode will be in the upper right in this video at this point uh, once I post the episode recap. Thanks for watching, everybody.